Доброго дня. Я рада вітати My pleasure to welcome all of you at the, in this conference to discuss the survey data which was conducted uh, by the NGO Analytical Center SADUS and research agency InfoSapiens uh, on the technical organizational support of the UN Population Foundation as well as the UNDP and in Ukraine and the Ministry of Youth and Sports, as well as under financial support uh, of the Minister, Ministry of uh, Internal Affairs of Denmark, Marina Paten Patapenka, Jako uh, Silier, the head of the representative office of the UNDP in Ukraine, the representative of the UN Foundation of Population in Ukraine, Jaime and Dala, representatives uh, of the analytical center SADAS, Dmitry Savchuk, and Ivan uh, Verbitsky presenting. Uh, the point is uh, that uh, lots of population have been transferred uh, as uh, within Ukraine and outside. A number of infrastructure objects have been damaged and destroyed. Under such circumstances, a special focus should be given uh, on the situation with youth who are looking for jobs and uh, uh, the uh, UN Foundation of Population as well as the UNDP office in Ukraine are looking for the mechanism uh, to support youth at the time in the in time of war, and uh, for this purpose, it's necessary to study their. Um, preferences and their needs. The Ministry of Sports and um, Youth uh, actually uh, th they fully support uh, the decision-making process with engagement of youth. The floor is opened uh, for Jaime Nadal. Uh, UN Foundation of Population Representative Office in Ukraine. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, um, the United Nations Population Fund works to protect and to support young people, providing a platform through which their voices can be amplified, their engagement can be advanced, and their needs can be addressed. Jointly with partners, we work to enhance awareness on the situation of youth in Ukraine and to increase recognition of the rights and aspirations of young people. We recognize youth as key agents of change. Their role is fundamental for strengthening resilience across society and for the sustainable recovery. Building on the strong relationship with the Ministry of Youth and Sports of Ukraine and drawing on the expertise gained in supporting youth participation at national, regional, and local levels, we are very pleased to work with the government of Ukraine to promote youth policies, national youth coordinating mechanisms, and national youth programs as integral parts of social and economic development. In cooperation with our sister UN agencies like UNDP, with national and local governments and non-governmental organizations, we pursue exactly these goals. Since 2015, and at the request of the Ministry of Youth and Sports of Ukraine, an annual research on the state of young people in Ukraine, including their socioeconomic status, their values, their needs and demands, has been conducted. As part of this endeavor, but with a shifted focus on the effects of, of the full-scale invasion, this wave of the UNFPA, UNDP, Ministry of Youth and Sports joint nationwide, uh, nationwide research impact of war on youth in Ukraine was conducted in late 2022. We know that the ongoing war in Ukraine has resulted in significant loss of life, in unprecedented displacement, both internally and to neighboring countries, and in devastating destruction of infrastructure. 
It has particularly affected young people, disrupting their education and creating a psychological trauma. They are also at increased risk of sexual and physical violence and abuse. Economic instability, unemployment and displacement have further affected the well-being of young people. At the same time, since the outbreak of the full-scale war, Ukrainian youth have been very active in the emergency response, engaging as volunteers in, the, in their communities, helping with the distribution of humanitarian aid, and in securing shelter for IDPs and vulnerable populations. The fact that formal structures for youth engagement and participation, like youth centers and youth councils, were integrated very early on into the government-led emergency response and operation in the humanitarian setting was certainly instrumental. However, the mid- and the long-term role of young people in the recovery phase has yet to be defined, and there is a need to devise a platform where youth can engage and articulate their challenges, their needs, and their vision for the future of Ukraine. Today, we are presenting the results and findings of the UNFPA, UNDP, Ministry of Youth and Sport uh, survey, which we hope will be an important step in this direction. The findings from the research can inform the development of policies and programs aimed at supporting young people affected by the conflict. For instance, the research can help identify areas where targeted interventions are needed, such as mental health services or educational support, but the research can also be a very useful tool to further advocate for their inclusion in decision-making processes. With the aim to enhance the response efforts, the findings we are presenting today can also help humanitarian organizations and government agencies to better understand the specific needs of young people affected by the conflict and help tailor the multisectorial response efforts accordingly. Ukrainian youth will have to play an integral part in Ukraine's post-war recovery efforts. They will play a fundamental role helping to shape important initiatives and movements such as the rebuilding of youth infrastructure, designing and being part of community level recovery efforts, including youth-friendly services, and perhaps even more importantly, to become an efficient workforce and the backbone of human capital for the recovery efforts. In closing, let me just pledge UNFPA continuing support to advance the cause of youth empowerment, engagement, and rights. We look forward to continuing our work with the different stakeholders under the leadership of the Ministry of Youth and Sports to ensure the fulfillment of youth, uh, of young people's potential for the present as well as for the future of Ukraine. Thank you, Jovan. Thank you very much, Mr. Harmer. And now the, f the floor is open to, uh, uh, for the permanent representative of the UNDP programs in Ukraine, Yako Silje. Thank you. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, let me just welcome you all to this, uh, this uh, event. It is a great pleasure actually to be here and to also do this initial opening remarks. Um, I would also like to extend my sincere appreciation uh, to the Ministry of Youth and Sport and the United Nations uh, Population Fund. Uh, without this valuable contribution and uh, collaboration, this report would indeed not have been possible. What we have seen from this survey is that the youth in Ukraine very much care about their future. And this is understandable since they will spend the rest of their lives in the future that they will create. And I think what we indeed see is that the future of this country is in strong hands with the youth. The war has had a profound impact on the lives of young people throughout Ukraine, leading to educational disruptions, displacement and psychological trauma. However, until now, understanding of the full extent of this impact has been limited, and this is why this survey is indeed so important. 
We are pleased to welcome the results of this survey, which will therefore provide a much deeper insight into the situation faced by young people in Ukraine at this moment. Despite the challenges of the war, many young people in Ukraine have actively partic participated in e emergency response effort. They have volunteered in their communities, distributed humanitarian aid, and provided support for internally displaced people. This collaboration by the results in this research, which shows that the number of young people have started to volunteer significantly more since the start of the war has increased indeed substantially. 30% of the youth respondents stated that they volunteer for the first time in 2022, compared to only 6% in 2021. And much of the formal youth infrastructure, as mentioned by Hemi, has also been severely affected by the war. Prior to the full-scale war, there were more than 300 youth centers and spaces throughout Ukraine as part of the Ukrainian youth policy implementation infrastructure. Many of these youth centers have been significantly impacted or completely damaged. And what UNDP, together with the United Nations system and the World Bank and uh, the European Union found in our recently concluded rapid damage needs assessment, is that nearly $3.8 million worth of damages have been caused to youth centers alone. And therefore, recognizing the need to ramp up the inclusion of young people in Ukraine's recovery process becomes even more important. UNDP has started to do many of these initiatives, and during the summer, 30 youth dialogues were organized across the country. These dialogues also helped to look at recovery efforts and bring in the much demand and needs of young people in the de decision-making process. A similar important activity is the Vitnova Initiative, where UNDP, in partnership with the Ministry of Youth and Sport, engages young people in all regions to participate in, ac in active exchange visits. There are two common sayings that I always like to highlight when I speak to youth. The first is that the youth is the hope of our future. The second is that the youth of today is the leaders of tomorrow. We have clearly seen from this survey that was conducted that the, that the war has resulted in a generation in Ukraine that is more resilient, more willing to serve, and cares about the future of their country more than ever. It's also clear that the future of Ukraine is in strong hands because of the vision and aspiration of the youth living in this country. In conclusion, I would like to reiterate the strong commitment of UNDP to the youth of Ukraine, and we very much believe in the potential and the positive drive that will come from the youth. Thank you for your attention, and thank you for your, our involvement in this process. It is very much appreciated, and we hope that the results would lead to positive implications for young people. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Yano. And the floor is opened for the Deputy Minister of Youth and Sports, Marina Potapenko. Thank you very much. Uh, dear colleagues, we would like to thank you uh, for uh, actually for a, a stable partnership. Uh, uh, and this uh, partnership allows us uh, to implement strategic plans in Ukraine uh, with the outreach uh, to use. Uh, actually, before 2022, we had a sort of a thesis that uh, I, uh, youth in Ukraine is not a resource, it's value. But young people in Ukraine is a, it's not a target uh, uh, population. Uh, it's a sort of a um, population that actually plays an important role in human development uh, and resource development and they understand what future role will be with use uh, during the recovery uh, process. We understand uh, the use here uh, is uh, in our focus. Uh, they are integral 
integral part of all the processes in Ukraine. If you speak about the strategic activity areas, uh, we continue uh, implementation of the strategy that is designated through 2030, and we have managed uh, to revise this uh, strategy, and this was done in 2022. And now we understand that one of the important uh, activity areas uh, uh, with use uh, will be support to use. It's very critical for Ukraine, and here we should speak uh, how we could provide uh, uh, security, youth security, integration of the youth potential in order to elaborate on security models in Ukraine. Also, we work with uh, many stakeholders and partner partners. Uh, we work on such issues as uh, securing resilience. We are aware, uh, and we may see from the, uh, this study, the survey, uh, how actually use, uh, showed use readiness for transformation, uh, how they need, they need actually push for the uh, accelerated transformation uh, in the environment of the new challenges uh, with their knowledge, with their competencies. It's so critical for us, uh, uh, for all young people people who are now in Ukraine or outside Ukraine. It is also very important, uh, the health issues of young people, uh, the harmo harmonic development of any person. Uh, it is in also in focus uh, because mental health, health uh, is a focal issue. Nobody has doubts uh, that uh, we should put uh, our best efforts uh, uh, for the um, recovery of the uh, uh, mental health of young people. Uh, also, one of the strategic priorities uh, is uh, integration uh, issues. Uh, we understand that this issue has slightly different uh, um, meaning. We understand today uh, we actually aim all our efforts to the maximum integration of IDPs, uh, young people who left uh, their houses and were looking for the best uh, uh, opportunities, and they were supposed uh, to settle there and to organize themselves and to organize their new life to secure their future life. Uh, we express our gratitude to our partners. Uh, our partners uh, help us to revise our strategic plans uh, which will meet the needs uh, and challenges of youth in Ukraine. Also, they help us to prepare new action plans and also we thank them for the opportunity uh, to, uh, for us to be flexible and take uh, immediate decisions uh, in the martial in the martial law and for us it's very important uh, also to acknowledge this uh, that uh, under the support of our partners, they also promote uh, setting up of the youth centers, uh, and this will be the network of youth centers. Uh, we would like also reinforce uh, knowledge and skills of uh, young people in order to accomplish adaptation. We should also firm up resilience of young people when they uh, leave in the uh, uh, in the communities uh, also for us uh, important all also to strengthen volunteering in Ukraine because uh, uh, these issues are in the focus in Ukraine 
Uh, actually, for us, it's important uh, to mention that based on the results of this study, more than 75% of young people uh, who were interviewed uh, in Ukraine and outside Ukraine, they would like to join the recovery process. Uh, it is, means uh, it testifies for the very high level of awareness uh, because actually within a very short time they became real grown-ups and they are ready to be responsible uh, and get tasks uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, this was not observed earlier. This is a huge potential, and this potential we should integrate in all sectors during the recovery period. Uh, uh, very important to mention that the educational sector is so critical. Here, we would like to uh, invite youth uh, to the processes. We understand uh, very many sectors should be undergo transformation and reforms. And for us, it's important uh, to propose meaningful models for transformation and reforms. Uh, thank you very very much. Uh, we thank uh, Marina Patapenka uh, for highlighting the priorities of the government with regards uh, to support uh, of youth in Ukraine. The floor is open now uh, uh, to our colleagues. Uh, there will be presentation of the key findings of this survey, and the floor is opened uh, for Dmitro Savchuk, research agency in Fosapiens. The floor is opened for you. Uh, uh, Analytical Center in Fosapiens, and um, actually it was uh, conducted under the request of the Ministry of Youth and Sports. In 2022, there was the follow-up of this uh, uh, survey. For us, it's very important to understand what were real impacts, uh, and uh, for us it was also very important to ha get this under understanding. Uh, for us, it's important actually how young people perceive the current situation, what are their concerns, uh, what are their intents uh, with regards to their future life. Uh, also, uh, for us, it's important to understand what are their intentions uh, with regards to migration outside Ukraine. Actually, uh, for us, it's important to understand what are the most vulnerable uh, groups, uh, uh, which groups were affected uh, by violence. Also, for us, it's important to understand uh, how instabilities uh, impact youth uh, and uh, how, what is their vision uh, as to the youth role in the recovery process. Uh, this survey was conducted in 2022, uh, actually in late November, uh, as to actually we covered uh, uh, all the regions in Ukraine, and uh, this were vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis interviews. Uh, uh, actually, uh, the same uh, uh, we had. We had 2,000 interviews uh, um, in 2021, but we covered only the Ukraine-controlled territories. Uh, so you may raise the issue, how compatible are the data 2021 and 2022? There are certain limitations, no doubt, because general totality was changed, uh, because uh, we understand the certain proportion of use in the occupied territories certain proportion of youth left Ukraine, and um, uh, in order to compensate this, we asked young people outside Ukraine, uh, 405 respondents were asked, uh, were interviewed uh, from the 28th of December through the 6th of January. Actually, we used the SMS uh, uh, um, 
text messages and uh, and this uh, there was a huge assistance uh, on the part uh, of Kiev Star. Uh, the point is that uh, unfortunately. Um, not uh, all the people, uh, we could not actually interview those who are at uh, non-controlled territories and those who left for Belarus. Uh, so uh, also we had interviews uh, with the vulnerable persons representing young. Uh, we also interviewed uh, uh, IDPs, uh, Roma population as well as the youth outside. Uh, actually, the analytical uh, uh, paper will present the overall analytical documentation. And uh, also, uh, to continue this presentation, the floor is open to Ivan Verbitsky, Analytical Center, SEDAS. Uh, thank you very much. I will be brief. I would like to highlight uh, not all the findings. Uh, actually, there is uh, the full document. Uh, and uh, uh, I would like to start uh, with uh, the impacts that actually we uh, identified those uh, that were affected use in Ukraine. As this uh, survey was conducted in the winter season, uh, the point is that uh, we could not cover uh, all young people living even in Ukraine because uh, this was the period of blackouts in Ukraine. But uh, if you speak about long term issues that are observed today. Now we don't have blackouts and power disconnections. There are two strong trends. Uh, that is first health uh, uh, problems. Uh, this is physical health and the mental uh, problems. And actually these uh, are more concerning issues. The second trend that was observed as uh, the, due to the losses, uh, many young people lost their income and lost their jobs. Uh, uh, we also understand that uh, so also gender role in the society is very important, uh, but also here there are even uh, more impacts and more concerns uh, that is separation, death, mobilization, uh, housing damage uh, and destruction. Uh, all these we may witness today. As we see in the data with regards to the income of young people compared uh, to 2021, the lower income, the larger number of people who are covered in this group. Actually, the material status uh, of households uh, became much lower. Also, we may see that compared to 2021, in 2022, actually, we had a higher proportion of those who are unemployed. They lost their jobs. And here, we also uh, asked young people what are the more concerning issues. And compared to 2022 and 21, we may see that young people uh, who stayed in Ukraine and outside, there are certain trends. And uh, also, uh, there are more concerns uh, as that is uh, physical security and physical safety, also um, income issues, mental health. Uh, has, it's a much higher share uh, amongst people who are staying in Ukraine with the, those young people who stay outside Ukraine actually the higher proportion are of those 
And uh, this could be linked uh, to the fact that when they are outside Ukraine, uh, the point is that uh, they slightly lost their linkages with their mo motherland. Actually, we ask what are their life goals. Uh, they have, and here we may say that in general, uh, their life goals. Uh, uh, in principle hasn't changed uh, because uh, actually the same goals were observed in 21 and 22 but uh, also um, in principle we had more young people uh, and we could acknowledge the young people have their life goals, uh, but young people say uh, more firmly that they have uh, life goals. Uh, so uh, uh, maybe this is due to the war. They are now more sure that they have life goals. Uh, also, uh, in this uh, survey, our finding is that the very high proportion uh, of young people who communicate in Ukrainian, uh, not only in their families, but at work or uh, at studies. And uh, the next section of questions is related uh, to the factors uh, uh, related to instabilities as well as civic activity of young people. And here we see is that uh, there is a high proportion of youth uh, who, who are engaged uh, in uh, civil activities compared to 2021. And uh, as it was already stated today, a uh, certain activity uh, are very prevalent that is fundraising, volunteering, uh, support to the military, support to the IDPs, uh, charities, fundraising. All these issues um, uh, are actually very reported uh, uh, in this survey. Also, we asked uh, what is their wish, uh, whether to leave Ukraine, uh, uh, immigrate uh, outside Ukraine. And here we may see that they have a high proportion of young people who wish uh, to live in Ukraine. In general, uh, actually, we have a, my, a much higher feeling, uh, patriotic feelings in Ukraine. On another hand, uh, this could be due to uh, because uh, people realize their young people realize their social role, and um, those who left Ukraine um, also uh, they um, reported this. This data uh, is very critical uh, for the government. Uh, uh, because for us it's important to retain young people of Ukraine because uh, they will be those who will lead the processes in future. Also those who were interviewed outside Ukraine, uh, so they were forced to leave Ukraine and uh, they fled uh, to Europe. Uh, and here also uh, we could say that there were the issue is uh, we are talking about the wish, not uh, the real return to Ukraine. Because, um, and here we understand also other limitation could be with that uh, those who wish to return to Ukraine, uh, they will be more, uh, they were uh, more showed readiness uh, to uh, answer these questions. For us, it's important to understand what is the vision of young people uh, as to their future. And in 2022, we have a high proportion of young people who rather support or support, definitely support Ukraine uh, membership uh, in NATO. One of the uh, issues that was covered in this survey 
It is the vision of the condi peace conditions, uh, and there is uh, a high proportion uh, of young people who believe that this condition will be the full return of all the territories. Addiction of territories. Uh, uh, it's, there is a very small proportion uh, of people who believe that uh, the peace conditions could be uh, also under condition of the giving up certain territories. Uh, and actually, stability of peace is so critical, and uh, young people actually are much concerned of this. One of the uh, questions covered the issue uh, with tolerance. Uh, we asked uh, this in the former to whether they uh, could live in the neighborhood uh, with certain social groups. And we see that it looks like that in 22, the tolerance uh, has increased. And the proportion of those who don't want to live in the neighborhood with Roma or LGBTIQ+, uh, people uh, and uh, 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 drug users or those uh, who are uh, actually people, uh, actually young people showed intolerance to these issues uh, because uh, we understand that also there is also the gender uh, that many people are unwilling to live in the close neighborhood with certain uh, uh, categories and we believe that this should be taken into account. Also, we asked uh, uh, representatives of vulnerable groups, for example, Roma people. Uh, we asked them what is their vision, uh, how they assess the attitude of the society towards them. And uh, the representatives of these groups uh, showed uh, that the situation uh, with the um, uh, attitude to the Roma people are the same, uh, but uh, Mm. We understand also uh, that certain actions have been taken in order in order to give the support to this uh, uh, category of people. One of the co questions are uh, covered uh, engagement issues, engagement in the recovery processes at the level of their communities. And also, many uh, young people, uh, 75 or 80 percent, are ready to join the recovery process in Ukraine. We understand that they have already started the recovery process, but uh, also we understand that more and more young people are ready to join the recovery process. Uh, it's a sort of a very positive uh, uh, value uh, and we acknowledge this uh, that young people have a sort of a, have a very positive emotions and standing uh, with regard to this uh, issue. As to the processes that are taking place, uh, uh, we understand that uh, young people also get engaged in them. Also, during the discussions, we understand uh, uh, for us uh, it's important to bring knowledge to young people what is recovery. Some people have a good understanding, and maybe more people could be engaged to their sort of awareness raising campaigns in order to bring knowledge to young people, understanding what is the recovery process, because we understand what is a huge potential of young people, and they will be strong contributors to this process. Without the potential of young people, probably recovery process uh, will be more difficult. Uh, as I have mentioned earlier, volunteering uh, actually it shows a much higher proportion with young people with regards uh, to other, other engagement uh, in uh, 
So certain activities show that uh, the proportion is lower, uh, but we understand that uh, that here probably it uh, could be only the reflection of the impact of war and these processes uh, will recover with time after the victory. We ask young people also what are the forms are most interesting and suitable for them. And uh, here we have the highest proportion of those. These are the forms uh, that, for example, when we could link, engage young people uh, under certain project activities, uh, maybe some public activities or young projects uh, uh, that are designed uh, to give support to young people, opening of young centers, including their leisure time. And um, Uh, the awareness about uh, youth centers, uh, actually it is at the same um, level as it was earlier. One force of young people know that uh, uh, we have youth centers in Ukraine and the considerable uh, percentage of those who do know about this, uh, they attend uh, these young centers. And uh, we may see here that there is a good potential, first of all, to give more awareness about the uh, uh, presence of such young cent youth centers. And uh, with this, we will increase uh, youth engagement in uh, activities of uh, youth centers. What activity areas uh, of youth centers, uh, of youth space is the most interesting for them? And uh, actually, we could uh, interpret uh, these uh, results. Uh, many young people say about the patriotic uh, upbringing, uh, sports activities, volunteering, cultural activities. And uh, these activity areas uh, are important. And uh, one of the hypotheses uh, as the researchers, uh, when we analyze this data, is that, uh, that answering these questions, uh, there was much theorizing behind uh, their answers. Uh, because uh, uh, it means that that uh, uh, national and patriotic upbringing um, we here probably they mean that during the war it is critical uh, to enhance uh, national patriotic upbringing. And uh, also we could interpret this result that there is a certain need uh, in uh, enhancing national patriotic upbringing. Uh, so it means that we should organize certain activities uh, to prepare certain pro programs in support to this, uh, um, to this activity area. And uh, also, we asked also what are the communication channels in use with young people. It is so critical in order to reach the objectives that we have already highlighted. And here we see that there is lots of changes compared to 2021. Facebook uh, is not the popular channel. Telegram uh, channel is ranking the first. Uh, and we understand that uh, this should be analyzed uh, by our uh, uh, authorities uh, because uh, uh, such channels as YouTube, Instagram and Telegram should be uh, also used uh, for communication purposes for the young, to the benefit of young people. And um, I would like actually to get to recommendations and conclusions. And here, uh, as to the data that we have obtained, uh, we have lots of findings. Uh, I would like and call you 
Also, more details are given in the full uh, report and more. And here in this section, first of all, actually health sector and health sector infrastructure is so critical. This saw that very many young people have certain health problems and they have more concerns about this. Uh, uh, it includes also mental health, their mental health status, replacement uh, also is so critical because it is one of the challenges both when we speak about uh, their replacement in Ukraine and outside Ukraine. We also interviewed young people with disabilities. Before 2022, they also had certain difficulties, and for them also these difficulties also continue uh, to exist. Uh, and. Um, and uh, also they acknowledge uh, that uh, with war this issue is became more critical for them. Also the next block of uh, challenges encountered by the young people is the job placement and income. Uh, so we should assist young people in uh, studies, uh, we should uh, assist them in job placement uh, uh, to secure their incomes. The key recommendations, uh, this is use young people uh, return to Ukraine rain for us important to understand uh, and we uh, confirm it with the results that they have such a wish to return to Ukraine and uh, inclusion of youth in the recovery process after their return actually we understand uh, but how will we use this potential in future lots will depend uh, of what actions uh, will be in place. Also we saw that there is uh, a much higher proportion of young people who are engaged in civic life and civic activities and um, it looks like that uh, we may use this positive experience uh, they got earlier we know that there is a certain proportion of young people who firstly joined volunteering and this could be the basis for the future engagement of young people in future. It is counteracting and preventing discrimination. This is also a critical um, sphere. Here we focus on the Roma people. This is the most discriminated ethnic group. LGBTI K plus also we have uh, also in partnership one of the projects uh, with the focus on this uh, uh, category of people but uh, another group is the drug abuse and alcohol abuse uh, also these are the issues that have been observed and studied in this survey we also uh, showed this uh, you, young people are ready to be engaged in volunteering and with this uh, also we could uh, implement a number of activities in future. One of the important options and variants for the larger um, engage, higher engagement uh, may be preparation of the sectoral level uh, policy papers aimed at support of the young people in order to remove uh, the challenges which which with which they encounter today. As I have cultural issues, sports issues, job issues, uh, this is not the exhaustive list of the issues uh, that are of concern for young people. I will wrap up uh, the comments to the uh, findings of this survey. We are ready to answer all your questions in our common discussion. Uh, thank you very much.
for your presentation of the key findings uh, of the survey findings. I would like to voice that the full document uh, with the findings uh, actually is available at the site of the UNDP office and the UN uh, mm, Foundation of Population office. We have representatives of the government, representatives of international organizations, representatives of youth, representatives of use. Uh, maybe it will be important. Maybe you have some comments uh, or questions uh, to the speakers uh, to specify this or that issues. Please raise your hands, uh, introduce yourself, and then we will start question and answer session. Use the microphones. Good afternoon. Thank you very much uh, for a very interesting survey. Uh, actually, the data presented is so imp um, important. In particular, I uh, saw as uh, such a result, uh, results, what are the changes uh, of non non-material requests on the past uh, of the young people? What are their uh, goals? Uh, they would like to be free uh, in their actions. Uh, I understand that uh, the impact uh, the impact of the point is that the Russia would like the uh, Russia would like to limit the will of Ukraine, and this is a very critical issue. And actually, uh, I uh, also saw such uh, a data that uh, for us it's important that in previous years, in 2021, 12% of young people, uh, zero uh, uh, percent uh, is with young people uh, who stay in Ukraine and wh those who are outside. My question is, a uh, youth audience uh, mm, largely uh, is politically passive and in social life. Maybe uh, actually you have covered this during your focus group discussions. Uh, uh, to what extent y young people are ready to actually to enhance their political and social activity and to take part uh, not only in the recovery. You mentioned that not all young people understand what is a recovery process, uh, how they are ready to be the civil servant, how they are ready to work uh, in the local governance bodies, uh, how m they are aware Mm, that their participation in election also uh, plays an uh, enormous role. Uh, what is their readiness to be engaged in discussions that are organized by local governance uh, and, um, lo and to propose their ideas, uh, their uh, programs? Uh, I could comment on your question the following. Political engagement uh, Actually, it showed uh, actually a lower percentage compared uh, to the civic activity. Uh, but um, actually, uh, this issue uh, was covered uh, in this survey. But uh, one of the conclusions uh, could be made uh, from the other um, surveys that to this or that extent, uh, a higher proportion of young people who were engaged uh, to volunteering or other civic activity, it is a sort of a change. Earlier, these people had no, had no such experience, inclusion uh, in the processes connected with the poli poli politics. It's so critical. We understand that is a sort of a potential that could be used. Also, there are different standings uh, and positions on political issues. Uh, and in 2022, there were lots of changes. The, the, the attitude to the um, political course of Ukraine, the way of commu they communicate, uh, uh, so there is such 
certain uh, uh, certain political uh, reflection we understand and we believe that we could uh, work more on this uh, and uh, also important to mention when we speak about young people and their role in the political life, they are a uh, worker in the um, we have young people who are uh, members of the local uh, councils. Uh, we have young people who work in different ministries and uh, uh, agencies. I believe that we should build up bridging uh, uh, between the topics we discuss and the real engagement uh, of young people to this or that uh, uh, process. Uh, because we understand that young people, uh, we, sh we could start this work uh, of building more these bridges. I would like to add that uh, uh, when we speak about traditional political activities of young people, uh, here in Ukraine we see um, the young people are ready to be engaged in political activities. Uh, it was shown by the revolution of dignity, the role of young people. Also, we observe that there is a higher engagement of young people in uh, political life. Uh, we understand for us it's uh, for us it's important uh, to show for the government uh, that uh, really young people could play and be real contributors to the processes. Tatiana Bodner, uh, the, the National Research Institute uh, named after Romanenko. I would like to welcome you with the finalization of this survey because I am a sociologist as well. I understand how it is difficult uh, uh, to conduct such a survey. It has been uh, such kind of surveys have been conducted for a number of uh, years uh, and for us it's important uh, uh, as the last uh, survey and uh, infographics shown. Uh, actually, I'm interested in some findings. There are lots of findings. Uh, they show the very different dynamics. Uh, and for us, it's important to analyze uh, what these or that dynamics tell us. Uh, what was the findings uh, in focus group studies? What would you like to make aim most of all? Uh, the point is to be uh, to become a, a skilled, qualified specialist. Uh, uh, this uh, with regards to young people who stay in Ukraine, those who were interviewed outside Ukraine, the proportion of them is the, those who are career-minded. Maybe you have studied uh, during the focus group or in-depth interviews. Uh, I'm interested, uh, actually, what actually is the difference. Uh, for us, it's important to understand uh, what is the capacity of the labor market. Uh, the percentage the change from 6 to 37 people, those who are ready to benefit the country. I'd like to mention that all in all, there are two ways to interpret this. First is that the goals, objectives could be linked to the problems with which young people encounter today. And uh, another is uh, economic activity is one of the issues. Uh, and uh, it was shown uh, um, that um, we understand the, uh, during the earlier surveys. On the other hand, we see on this graph uh, that uh, we have a much higher proportions uh, uh, by all the items. Uh, probably the impact of war actually could be the impetus for more thinking about the future goals, about their uh, objectives and goals for future. And maybe uh, this could be one of the drives why we Actually, we have a much higher proportion uh, of those who showed 
we have covered uh, different categories of young people. Thank you. Good afternoon, Anna Chernyavska, International Organization of Migration. Two questions. The first question, whether you have observed during your data analysis differences uh, in the gender profile. Have you studied what the impact of war in the gender profile, women and men? And uh, uh, whether you have in your report as the impact of war in the regional uh, profile or mark broad regions. Uh, so for us it's important certain specific features uh, uh, to get a, a high level of details of this uh, information. Actually we did do this, uh, all this available in our enlarged report. Actually I will use one of the slides and uh, here actually but the question uh, related to health, uh, uh, physical health or mental health, it is uh, more of concern with women and uh, income reduction. It is the more concerning issue in men. We understand that similar trends uh, uh, actually were confirmed uh, in 2021. And we understand that uh, maybe uh, sometimes it could be linked uh, to existing stereotype gender roles uh, because we understand that uh, uh, and maybe uh, this uh, is could be one of the reasons why we can see and observe such a trend. If we speak about the mental health uh, here as a in the eastern and southern regions in Ukraine, we see a higher need uh, uh, for the support, for the mental support of young people. And uh, if we take discrimination and tolerance issues, uh, then uh, then. Uh, young people living in the southern and the eastern parts, they are more tolerant to uh, Roma people. In the western parts of Ukraine, people are less tolerant towards um, Roma people. Uh, all these uh, detailed information may be found in the full report. I'd like to add one of the reasons uh, why we had such a sample I responded sample because for us it was very important to cover all the regions. That's why we have the also the regional. I would like to ask an additional questions. Your sample covers. Uh, uh, do you cover the uh, young people in age from 14 through 25? We understand. Do you have a sort of a sub samples uh, uh, like uh, because uh, it's a big uh, sort of. Uh, uh, young people aged 14 and aged 25, uh, these are different people, I agree, and uh, actually the differences, uh, age differences are also, were also observed, and this is covered in the full report. I saw the raised hand. Good afternoon. My name is Natalia. I represent uh, the National Council of Youth in Ukraine. Uh, so there was uh, the, to what extent uh, uh, you uh, uh, perceive uh, the peace conditions. 77 percent young people consider not acceptable. Uh, if you add more who rather consider this acceptable, there will be a much higher percentage. Sixty-two percent of young people don't consider opportunity as uh, joining the Ukrainian army. How you can could uh, actually treat this data and? Um, interpret this data because you see uh, 
the percentage, uh, for some, we understand many people believe that the peace conditions, uh, when we give up certain territory to territories, are not acceptable. And the very high percentage of young people who are not ready to join Ukrainian army. There are certain clarifications uh, and explanations on this, uh, because the wish uh, to have peace in this or that uh, uh, way. It's uh, different issues whether you d are ready to join uh, the army. Uh, in this regard, uh, this uh, question was asked uh, both women and men, and in gender distribution also this data uh, are more sensible, meaningful, and uh, also we may speak about different format of engagement in the military. It's a sort of a very general question, how it was formulated uh, about in the sector on values and thinking. At the same time, in order to have more in-depth studies, uh, Action, you may ask uh, whether you already voluntarily join um, the army. Uh, are you ready to join the army when uh, you have a summon uh, from, as a, uh, from the military? So for us, it's very important. Uh, Probably uh, when we have a more detailed uh, questions on the, this question, maybe percentage will be much low. Depending on the uh, uh, level of detailization in the questionnaire and uh, how we could interview with a high level of detailization, we believe that we will have uh, slightly different results. And uh, uh, actually, you see, uh, we, uh, many peop young people, uh, they understand that the stable peace uh, could be reinstated uh, uh, under these or that uh, uh, conditions. Excuse me. And many people understand that they're the first option. Uh, actually, we could reinstate peace in Ukraine. Uh, we understand in case if, uh, for example, we don't have the full territories return, uh, this only will prolong the war in future, and this will be the next round on water. So very many young people acknowledge uh, that the return of the full to the territories, uh, the all Union uh, Ukrainian Center. Uh, you mentioned that the much higher proportion of young people actually with their income they are at the verge of poverty but you mentioned uh, that young people have a higher rate of volunteering have you studied volunteering young people is a strong uh, human's potential but uh, uh, but how you commented and link it uh, that there is a very high proportion of young people who are at the verge of poverty. We see that uh, the mat material status uh, is uh, much lower, but uh, volunteering, growing volunteering and high volunteering rate uh, actually is uh, the fact uh, that took place in 2022. So we have many young people who joined volunteering and uh, uh, actually, young people uh, actually are volunteers. How long they will stay in volunteering? Maybe they will need more resources uh, on, uh, in order to uh, add up to their income. It is also one of the issues that uh, to be researched uh, and um, and uh, the fact that uh, very many young people, they speak about job search and job placement uh, 
and uh, it is one of the factors uh, uh, that uh, actually important uh, and to be acknowledged. Volunteering uh, or no pay uh, uh, job activities. Uh, also, uh, uh, we see that. Uh, in addition to this, young people are ready uh, to be volunteers. And we may use this opportunity in future. Thank you. Good afternoon. Vladimir Maximovich, the Department of Internal Policy of the Office of Pre Presidential Office. We, uh, I actually work uh, with the youth policies. Uh, I would like to thank uh, all those who were uh, contributing to this survey because all representative uh, survey is very critical uh, for the decision making process uh, because uh, the data is shown in dynamics. I would like actually uh, maybe to comment on uh, recommendations uh, I actually have looked through but I understand that uh, all these uh, sectors are very critical have you uh, studied uh, our leisure time of young people what actually they do when they have leisure time and Actually, I would like to comment as well as to the compromise uh, as to the uh, how red, uh, readiness of young people to be engaged uh, in real activities uh, linked to recovery. So 72% of people say that they are ready and only 1% is ready, is uh, engaged uh, in the recovery process. So we understand uh, more work to be done, both for the governmental agencies, uh, our office. Uh, thank Thank you. Uh, Vladimir, I would like to add, because we understand wish and action, because awareness level is so important, uh, because how we may use opportunities and instruments. Uh, I would like to comment Margarita's questions. You acknowledged very um, correctly that it is our common job that uh, giving opportunities uh, to get new skills and competencies that demanded in the labor market uh, it's we understand that those uh, who do these studies uh, and surveys we see that uh, there is a certain uh, trends uh, here and those who deal with the youth policies uh, we should actually link it to the educational sphere processes in order uh, to speed up the processes uh, to in giving the opportunities to get these or that uh, skills and knowledge studies on leisure time of the young people currently at the same time We understand there are some issues that are linked uh, to this topic, uh, and in partic particular, uh, what is linked with the youth centers, uh, activities proposed, uh, and leisure time culture um, use projects. Uh, this is in expectation of young people. This is in requests. Of people, of young people, uh, so bad habits are uh, not of concern of young people, and one of the interpretations of this is that that uh, these habits are not treated as something harmful. Sometimes people treat it as a sort of an instrument uh, 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 to lower their stress. Actually, I have a sort of another question. Quite recently, we have launched the program. Uh, and uh, as to the statistics, as far as I understand, 71% of young people, uh, they don't, 
they don't uh, uh, see that uh, they should go to psychologists when they propose uh, no cost services, uh, no pay services. Maybe actually you have studied this uh, uh, in your study, how you could actually link it uh, to the harmful habits. Uh, uh, and, uh, and my last, last question is that, Actually, we, uh, for us, it's inter interesting to know what is their communication language. Uh, it's interesting to, to see their profile of respondents. Uh, have you invited the indigenous people and the representatives of minorities, Roma people and Crimean Tata people? Have you covered them? I will start with the last other because of the resource and time limitations. Unfortunately, we could not uh, uh, have a detailed study of all the indigenous people and minorities uh, and prioritari priori we have priori prioritized uh, we worked uh, with the Roma people respondents uh, because they are mostly discriminated uh, uh, and they have a lesser access to services uh, related to job placement and so on uh, Actually, we understand that uh, that probably in future rounds uh, of this study, probably we could study more the indigenous people uh, and other minorities. Uh, with regards uh, to stress, and uh, here I'd like to comment on the following, is that uh, all of us are at a certain I we understand what is a psych support, how people treat it, what is psych support before the large scale invasion and changes uh, in the con in this con in understanding this concept is uh, all do also take place. Uh, for us, uh, it's important to understand that uh, and to add that uh, it was the indirect question. Some people who asked that they have no concerns with mental health, uh, but in focus groups, uh, actually, as uh, they said, that they are at stress. And uh, not always people could identify actually what is there, in what shape they are, whether they need or they don't need uh, the mental support. Also, there are differences probably between answers uh, given uh, uh, response uh, uh, answers given uh, in case, for example, do you need the mental support and whether you will uh, be ready to get uh, the no pay mental uh, support. So all these details, uh, uh, it's important uh, to mention the awareness raising about the network uh, of the mental support services. 28% acknowledge uh, that they are aware about the mental health support providers. Uh, uh, also, we understand that uh, that uh, more awareness should be uh, given to young people about the existence of the mental health providers, uh, how it is delivered, uh, and um, uh, and we understand young people present also the strata of population who were vulnerable and who were affected by the war. And uh, it's and um, there is a breakthrough in the thinking that. Uh, that in case, for example, the person needs more mental, more mental support, it's different. With regards to the mental support, uh, uh, if you take another program, you and me, the right to task, uh, actually for us it's important uh, to shape uh, the culture uh, on getting to uh, mental health providers. Uh, 
and very often young people and other categories of people, they don't recognize that they do need mental support. And for us, it's also important to understand how the system of mental support is built up. We understand this is uh, this effort uh, uh, needs lots of time, and uh, and this uh, should be uh, needs a sort of a comprehensive approach uh, because the issue of mental rec health recovery also important uh, for us. It's important uh, to focus on actually on the issues that are of concern uh, for young people. And then with this also we could recover their mental health. Uh, uh, well, Diversinko, the head of the Ukrainian Association of Youth Councils, I see that there are lots of data. And uh, thank you very much that you also covered the youth councils. And uh, it's true, I see that it is a very quality indicator uh, because uh, actually I represent the youth council and we have been discussing this issue. How many youth councils actually were interviewed? Uh, actually, have you the regional profile of the data on this uh, uh, issue? Because uh, the, uh, for us it's important to understand what is the situation in the region, uh, uh, what regions uh, were interviewed. And also, uh, I have two more questions. Maybe now you will answer, or maybe all in all, uh, all your three questions. You're welcome. Next question is uh, relates to the component. Uh, Natalia have mentioned this is the issue of peace and conditions of peace, uh, acceptability of these conditions. Uh, in this uh, society, we have uh, some people who are supporters of the Russian. Uh, uh, power and Russian regime. Actually, whether you had uh, in your sample representatives uh, of the civil society and what uh, were their response, uh, actually another question is uh, youth participations. Maybe I have not um, seen this is because actually, yeah, because the uh, youth councils, they also contribute uh, to the local regional um, governance authorities. Actually, we have not uh, sir, interviewed youth organizations. It was not the objective of this uh, survey. Uh, for us, it's important um, as the data we obtained Actually, we have not surveyed specifically uh, youth uh, centers uh, and youth councils uh, because uh, of the focus groups, actually, we worked with different categories, uh, also, also young youth uh, NGO NGOs were invited, and uh, for this focus group discussions, uh, and uh, unfortunately, uh, we don't have a regional profile on this sector. We have the broad regions, broad region the data is not included. It means they are because they are statistically meaningful. That's why we have not included them. Uh, and your first questions, I have covered them. And uh, the last question on your side, one of the opportunities for the larger engagements, uh, engagement of young people is that uh, this is uh, here could be the assumption under this survey that young people are less interested uh, to be engaged in the youth policy they are more ready to be engaged in certain activities, programs, uh, projects, uh, if they are linked to sports or culture. Uh, so there is a different spectrum of interests. And uh, uh, for us, it's important to engage uh, young people 
in decision making. They are ready to be engaged in certain activities at the local uh, uh, governance level. So youth activity is not always coordinated uh, uh, with the youth policy. It's true, we acknowledge this. And uh, young people and young youth centers uh, will be a sort of a communicators bridging as it will help young people to be better oriented uh, in such a complex world but interesting world and be engaged in the civic uh, or political activities. Dear colleagues, one more question to be covered. Uh, it was a sort of a very good decision uh, to analyze dialogues uh, of victory. Actually, it's true that what we observe in this society, and we are much thankful for you. Uh, thank you, colleagues. I would like uh, uh, to our speakers uh, and uh, our presentation uh, uh, gets to its end, uh, we invite you to be familiarized uh, mm, uh, with the full document. Uh, it is placed uh, on the site of the UNDP office in Ukraine as well as UN Foundation of Population in Ukraine. Thank you.